Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm George, I'm a reseller, and, and today is another deep dive. One of the things that we like as resellers is we do like bread and butter items, things that we can go out, are plentiful, we can pick them up, and we, we're pretty much guaranteed a sale, like we know the brand sells well. And to be brand focused is important, I get it. You've got some comfort brands. I like to call comfort brands or bread and butter brands. And you can go into charity shops and you can find them for a couple of quid and you can easily flip them online. They'll, they're like your, you know, your bread and butter, the, the ones that make you all warm and fuzzy inside when you see it. <laughs> um, currently mine at the moment is folk. <laughs> folk for three pounds, thank you. Um, so yeah, I do have like quite, and Gant, Gant used to be until they pulled the prices. Um, some people like Carhartt, some people like uh, the North Face, some people like all different kinds of brands. So, one of the things that makes us so unique in the term in terms of business is that we can put our hand to anything. We can put our what we do and apply it to anything really, and that's why niching comes. People like clothing, but then people like to niche within clothing. So the reason for this video is, is that I came across a brand that I'd never heard of. And here's the thing, I know it's been around for a while and I know other resellers would probably say like, well, you haven't heard of it. It's like, well, no, because I'm not taking it in. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I try to be a sponge as much as possible. But sometimes it's kind of hard to keep all that knowledge in. So I thought it'd be really interesting today to talk about five new brands that I have been made aware of in the past like couple of weeks. And pretty good okay so the first of these new brands that i've learned is one that i'm sure i've come across and now that somebody basically said oh you want to check that out and i have done i'm really surprised that i haven't it hasn't been in the back of my mind nose projects mixes classical workwear with streetwear and it's kind of become kind of like quite a well-known brand in fact in 2013 it was voted one of the most recognizable scandinavian brands Let's go have a look. Okay, so we do all the search parameters, which is basically solds on your left-hand side, and then um, we do the region that you're in, UK for me, uh, pre-owned, because we're for thrifting, we're more likely to find it pre-owned. Buy it now, because that's more likely what I sell at, at the moment, and I'd recommend the same. And uh, then I sort them by the highest first, because obviously I want to know what's the most profitable item. Uh, but you can also sell, do um, the uh, most recent first, uh, so you can see what's recently sold. But I just wanted to go over the, these ones. This is kind of incredible. The first thing that pops up with the same item, and it's a NOS project, Arctic Coat. Now, I'm no surprise, and coats always go really well. I mean, if you just keep on looking down, they've done lots of collabs as well. Laura Piana, uh, Rockfee. Oh, there's a Hacksuede bomber jacket. That's kind of nice. Uh, £280. Uh, another Arctic Rock V jacket. And, yeah, look, Down Parker. So, keywords there. Pertex. Gore-Tex. That's made a show in. No surprise there. Winter coats. Oi Polloi. Yeah, so you're getting, like, the, the traditional big keywords. Anton Corduroy. Corduroy shirt. Very good. Gore-Tex. Jen's Cortex jacket, £85. Pound. Another lamb's wool, Siegfried lamb's wool. Our first trousers, Aros light stretchy ivy green. So yeah, they've got a, they've got a large collection. There's another, uh, obviously another Scandinavian brand. Uh, Trent Moller, it might be a, a designer. Yeah, you're starting to see lots of shirts and you're starting to see lots of lambs wool. Between the uh, prices of 50 and 70, there's some more heavy chino jeans. Yeah, so another jump there. Hoodies starting to come into the fray. I wonder when t-shirts, what's the most expensive t-shirt? Another wool. So yeah, it's no surprising like, at the moment, in the winter months, Jackets, coats, and jumpers are going. I mean, that's about pretty obvious. And trousers. But it is a decent brand to keep an eye out. There's the first jeans. Selvaged jeans. There you go. Another keyword. Uh, very good, very good. There's another blue, blue denim shirt with a diamond print detail. Oh, £55. 
50 pound 50 pound 50 pound seems to be a really good like price point for a lot of these sweaters and uh trousers and chinos and like jumpers look 45 to 55 so yeah you, you're on for a winner i mean if you can get it for a couple of quid very interesting brand so yeah some really good stuff and i've actually sniped a jacket a norse jacket for 12 pound so hopefully i'm gonna get that i'm gonna try and put it up and i'll get back to you um the second brand that i want to talk about is maison kitsune <laughs> Maison Kitsune. It's like a fusion of French and Japanese because Kitsune is a nine-tailed spirit. This is a really unusual brand. It is a... <laughs> thanks to trusty Wikipedia, uh, I know that Maison Kitsune is a French-Japanese fusion brand. And the thing is, they don't just have, like... They don't just have, like, clothing. They've got a record studio. They've got cafes. I've never seen them. An art gallery, um, a chain of cafes, restaurants worldwide. But yeah, Kitsune in Japan word is fox, which is featured predominantly in their ready way. Yeah, there's always like a little fox. It was founded in 2002 by Gildas Loek and Masaya Kuroki. Probably butchered those names. I do apologise. Oh God, just looking at some of these artists that have signed to, to Kitsune. <laughs> years and years. I didn't know that. Um, Two Door Cinema Club. Thieves Like Us, Tom Vec, um, Hadoken, I remember them, Klaxons, LaRue, uh, Gilgamesh, Block Party, Fish Spoon as well. Mm. So yeah, they've got some serious bees under the belt. But they also do clothing, which is why we're here. Oh, French, but then the French and Japanese really do complement each other in terms of like the fashion styles. And yeah, I'm just, I'm shocked that... I'm just, it's another one where it's like, I'm sure I've heard of it, but I haven't properly done a deep dive in it. So I think it's important we have a look. Okie dokie, let's have a look. Kitsune Vintage Grey Pink Check Wool, £120. Oh, look at these boots. Sneaker boots. So Cardigan Men's, yes, yeah, so this is a unisex brand. They do both men's and women's, and they do a unisex uh, like section as well, so anyone can wear it. Uh, Ada Error. Ooh, I've never heard of that. But the, the it's almost like it's kind it's kind of minimalist. But they've got a spell out like sweater. Got hoodies. It's kind of, like traditional styles. Look how minimalist is that? Forty pound for a men's medium sweater, but it's got a tiny little logo. Some uh, trousers, graphic t-shirt. Sweater again, Kitsune, Maison Kitsune. What's it? Parisian. Uh, there's like a little fox on that one. I like that one. Just short of thirty pounds. And this, these, the thing is, this is a brand where I, I don't know unless you know it in a like a charity shop. Unless you work there and you know it, it might kind of pass you by a bit because it just looks a bit kind of like oh, it's, oh. With that I say like. Put it on the UK. Put it on the UK because that's where I'm thrifting from. That's what I'm primarily sell to. But I wanted to show you worldwide because look at this. It looks like it's big in obviously in Europe because it's a European brand. But look at the Americans. There is so many, so many. It's huge and like obviously Japan. It's got that. It's got. It's got a lot of markets. Look at, if you're lucky enough to come across stuff like this, it would be one of those ones that's a total, totally unassuming brand. I think is the best way to put it. Do I think I'm going to find this in my charity shop? Probably not. Um, but it's definitely one to keep in the back of your head, and it's got a nice name to it. I like the name Maison Kitsune. It's, it's very kind of like. Ooh. Yeah, so as ever with these type of brands, always look out for the collaborations that they do. A lot of like, companies love to collaborate with each It's like the new Buzz thing that they do. And Barber has actually done a collaboration with Maison Kitsune and also Puma. Apparently, well, Puma's kind of like, it is big in Europe, but it's not as big over here, although it is a brand. Collaborations. So always be on the lookout for those sort of weird and wonderful Irons, but yeah, there's a. Well, last time I checked, there was a cashmere uh, Maison Kitsune jumper that retailed for about three hundred pound, and it was just sat there for forty pound. I was like, should I get it? Should I get it? Oh, I don't know. So I, I put in an offer, and I'm just waiting now. 
Uh, it's probably already gone now, so I'll... <laughs> by the time this comes out it's probably already gone but yeah but check vintage because you never know there's lots of t-shirts puma kitsune t-shirts that are going on sale for 10 pound for a really good brand it's quite cheap for what you what they pay for okay so the next one is one that i wasn't going to put on this one i was going to save it for another video but it's a high performance outdoor wear brand situation and it is through dark is a really interesting brand as it doesn't just like mimic like special forces ops or like um it kind of mimics military uh uniforms and and they adapt it for the outside so it is practical you, it is an outside brand you can use it but they also add a fashion slant as well so some of these can go for stupid money i've seen a couple of coats go for a lot of money and yeah as ever like the important thing is think of what it's made of so Gore-Tex that's probably like the number one when it comes to outdoor brand Gore-Tex the pro kind of Gore-Tex ones but honestly I was really surprised at some of the sweaters and some of the t-shirts because some of the t-shirts depending on the collaborations that they do I think they, they did they've done a, like collaborations with like uh, tattoo artists yeah so if you, if, you, if you just like want to do a bit of research go on their website because they have some really interesting like combat wear that's like the buzz keyword if you want to look for it combat wear but they also do like t-shirts hoodies that kind of stuff which is like their fashion slant but it's the combat inspired outerwear that really brings in the money and you can pick it up if people haven't people have slipped on the what they say the nuances <laughs> That is not a brand to discount. If you see it out there, I would get it. Okay, this next one, I'm pretty sure I'm going to butcher the pronunciation again, but it's either Philippe or Philip Pleen. Founded in 1998 in Munich, Germany, he has created an empire. It is huge, and his net worth as of 2023 is 800 million. This designer, it means business, and he's done some insane collaborations. There's one... <laughs> The one that I re that really popped up in in the, a lot of the searches was the uh, shoes that I did with Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Just because it's Snoop Dogg, you gotta. Yeah, so it's a Swiss-based multinational corporation specialising in luxury goods. It owns brands Philip Pleen, Pleen Sports, Billionaire, Pleen Golf. The brand Philip Pleen was founded in 1998 Germany. Clean Sport in 2016. Billionaire was acquired by the Clean Group in 2016. Clean Golf was launched in 2021. And it was one of the first fashion labels to take cryptocurrency as of 2021. So that's pretty progressive of them. Uh, they also are kind of heavily influenced in the metaverse. And a lot of their things are starting to seep into the metaverse, which is kind of interesting. Like, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of fashion houses started to jump on that kind of bang, digital bang wagon and the NFT route. So, you know, good for them. I've noticed that he does do, like, in terms of, like, T-shirts, which is probably one of the things that does what you might more likely find because it's one of the cheaper items on his store. There's a lot of skulls, a lot of skulls, and a lot of, uh, like, what's it, like, gothic kind of like, inspired. Keep an eye out. It's not a cheap kind of, like, goth brand. It's worth hundreds of pounds. So, yeah, but that is definitely one to look out for particularly you're not going to see that every day but it's one definitely to keep in the back of your mind ami paris is alexandre metusi i want to say i got that right <laughs> um it's their label and he launched it in 2011 and he has slowly become like one of those brands where i'm starting to really like and it's like i've only like cottoned on to him in the past like few months and it's definitely i've never found his stuff out out in the wild because the label is really small i want to put the label up here and it's like so unassuming yeah ami paris and it's in harrods so it can't be behind the door it's obviously up there and it has like the logo is usually like a big a with like a heart on it yeah jackets and coats fly look at the state of them 150 plus with this lot that's nice uh some trousers paris carrot trousers 135 pound a hoodie 125 pound these are all pre-owned uh buy it nows as well um yeah the decure uh sweater 
Uh, the Love Heart over the A. Uh, that's another coat for £100. It's like a pullover, like quarter zip, men's unisex. Oh. But yeah, look, already, look at these. 80, 80, 75 shirts. A t-shirt, a bowling t-shirt for, oh, they took an offer, but it's listed at 75. Spell out AMI, very nice. Um, yeah, oh, that's a nice, I love that colour. That's like a dusty kind of like dull pink. I like that, 60 quid. And this is a brand where you can get it for quite cheap if you're lucky and if you're quick. I put something in my basket on Vinted and I left it there for about an hour because I had to go and make some dinner. It had already sold. Someone had bought it from under me. I was like, ooh. And it had only just gone on within like that day. And it's always so frustrating. <laughs> Quick rundown of my five brands that are now on my radar. AMI Paris, Maison Kitsune, Norse Projects, <laughs> Philip Pleen, and Through Dark Artist. Very different, very kind of like, I like to think that it does have this scope. And this is not just men's wear, it's women's wear as well. So just keep an eye out for those five. But yeah, I'm going to try and, I'm continually learning. I'm considerably putting all these brands into my uh, back, the back of my brain. So that if I'm ever so lucky to come across them at the thrift or out in the wild, I can identify them, I can pick them up. There's lots of these different types of brands that are popping up all over the place that have been around for a while. I've just been too dense because I've been too comfortable in my little box and in my bread and butter box, which is fine, but I want to expand it. I want to like recognise it when it's out in the wild, if I'm so lucky as to find it in the wild. Of course, it's in the back of my brain. And then I can at least say like, oh, I've got it. So those are definitely ones for the bucket list. Uh, and if you're lucky enough, you can snipe them off eBay or Vinted. So just keep an eye out. Yeah, so a bit of a different deep dive today, but nonetheless, it's more interesting. It's all about brand awareness. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.